Welcome back, everyone. The rivalry between Jacksonville State and UNA goes all the way back to the year 1949. And in 1992, well, that was the last time the Gamecocks even played a game against UNA in Florence. But that all changed on yesterday. Saturday's game was the only home game of the season for Coach Chris Willis and the Lions, and it turned out to be a good one. Lions marching down the field on their opening drive, and they took up a lot of time on it. Third and goal, Parker Driggers is shot, stopped just short of the goal line. So that would come on to allow UNA to get a field goal. It goes up and it's good by Sam Contarono and Lions up three to nothing. Jacksonville State finally getting on the board though. Zarek Cooper hitting Quan Charleston on the 14 yard TD strike. Gamecocks now on top seven to three. UNA responds with a touchdown drive of their own. Parker Driggers with his second score of the season. UNA now leads 10 to seven. Get used to me saying back and forth everyone. Zarek Cooper and Jacksonville State regain the lead with his one yard QB keeper. Gamecocks now lead UNA 14 to 10. Back and forth we go. Rhett Files in at quarterback. He hits Jacoby Bird for his 100 career catch. And guess what? It results in a UNA touchdown. Look how wide open the Florence native was on that one. 17 to 14 UNA on top. Cooper and Gamecocks of JSU. They put together a long drive and is capped off by this TV run by Mr. Coop. And Gamecocks now on top 21 to 17. Let's go to the final play of the game. It's 24 to 17, UNA down to Jacksonville State. Blake Deaver, one last heave. The Hail Mary to the goal line is knocked down by Jacksonville State. And the Gamecocks go into Florence and win this robbery game by a final of 24 to 17. Let's hear from both coaches. I'm so proud of them. I'm so happy for our, our whole Gamecock family because, you know, it. I've been around more than one year, and, and this game right here is uh, no love lost in this game on either side, and I'm just real happy we came away with the win. Good football game, good football team. I mean, they were favored. Uh, I mean, we just got to keep chipping away. We're, we're, we're still new at this, and uh, we're, we're going to get there. This is – I'm not losing sleep over. This is all for about 2021-22 season. Uh, I mean, this ain't – you know, I wanted to win, but, it, you know, it is what it is. They, they, they got us today. We just didn't come up with enough stops. So, guys, UNA versus JSU, pretty old rivalry here in Alabama. What are your thoughts, man? Well, Charity, I'll say this. First and foremost, this rivalry needs to be continued to be played over the next couple of years. I think they signed like a four-year deal. So we're in a scenario where we're going to continue to see this game be played out. And I think rivalries are good for all schools. Think about this entire state. Of course, the biggest rivalry in the state is the Iron Bowl between Alabama and Auburn. Then you think about the Max City Classic. Alabama A&M has Alabama State. Down there in Kayla's neck of the woods when she went to college, of course, they played for the belt. It's Troy, South Alabama. So you think about all the big rivals across the state, and at one point, Jacksonville State and UNA were in that big rivalry talk until, you know, some changes happened. Jacksonville State goes D1, but now UNA is D1 FCS too. So you're going to see this continue to play out, and I think it's great. The coaches talked about it through the past week when it comes to rivalries and the intensity of it or whatever, and you saw a great game. And speaking of great game, Kayla, you are up close and personal to this yesterday in the city of Florence. How how big was it between the two teams? And really, how did you like how these teams went at it yesterday? Well, it was really interesting for me to be there just because I haven't been able to witness these two teams playing at Brawley for a very long time. I mean, this, like you mentioned, it's an old rivalry. I think the first reported matchup was back in like 1949 or something like that, a long time ago. Um, but again, this was a big rivalry. And so yesterday, both teams played very aggressively. But the only difference was UNA didn't have a lot to show for their aggression because they got a lot of possessions. They had a lot of opportunities with the ball. They just didn't capitalize on any of those opportunities. Jacksonville State just happened to have the right play calling um, and the players being in the right places at the right time. All these things just kind of lined up more for JSU as opposed to UNA. Now again, John Gross, head coach of Jacksonville State, he wasn't there yesterday, so that was an adjustment that the Gamecocks had to make, um, and it just ended up working out in their corner. So I think the biggest takeaway, though, is just the fact that the Lions got some experience for their guys because that's head coach Chris Willis's biggest thing that he wants this season. They don't have a lot to play for. They're still waiting for any postseason play. So right now, they're just trying to get that experience. And I think yesterday was a really good opportunity for them to do that. And there's just a lot of things that they can learn and take away from yesterday's game. 
I also want to, you know, tip my hat off to Coach John Gross. I've been knowing him for several years. He's been a part of this rivalry as a player and a coach, and I know he hated to miss it, but of course, he did test positive COVID-19. We want to just wish him the best as he recovers from it. And for sure, we know he will definitely do that, um, you know, in the future down there in Jacksonville State land. So on another note, great game between both of these teams yesterday. Can't wait to see how it plays out on next season.